Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. So when I took my twins home from the hospital 17 months ago, I had no idea how I was going to get my work done and take care of my twins and just basically make sure that my life kept running. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five tips. The tips that I'm gonna share, I actually use every single day to make sure that my life and my business keeps running. Every week I make videos to help you launch and grow an online business around your unique strengths so that you can make a full-time income from home. So the first thing that I do is I prioritize. I know it's really easy to want to watch a bunch of videos and then figure out a system that worked for somebody else and then implement that system and just think, you know, that's it, that'll work for me. But it's important to take a step back and think, okay, but what is my big vision. Are these things that I'm putting into the system that I'm doing every day actually helping me achieve what I want to achieve? So the first step is to create your big vision in your mind. So think about like, what do you want in five or 10 years? Where do you see yourself? What does your life look like? And when you actually think about your big vision and write it down, it becomes a lot easier to then from that vision, create the goals that are going to help you get to that vision. Once you've created those goals, you can start to look at, okay, what are the activities and the habits that I need to adopt in order to achieve those goals? Once you know what activities you need to do, it becomes much easier to figure out what tasks you need to do in those activities. Once you're at the level where you're talking about the tasks, that's when you can start to put those tasks into a system and actually get them done every single day. The reason this is important is because if you create a vision that is exactly what you want to achieve, this is where you want to go in your life, and you become in love with that vision, obsessed with that vision, it's gonna be really easy for you to go and engage on social media or respond to your emails and do those everyday tasks that in the moment you might not feel like doing, but you'll do them because you know that those tasks help you achieve the goals that help you achieve the vision. And as you know, working from home with kids is really hard sometimes. And so being able to be obsessed with checking your email as an extension of being obsessed with your vision is going to be really, really helpful when you really don't feel like checking your email. I found that the key to actually getting all the stuff done on my to-do list is to not put a lot of stuff on my to-do list. It's really easy to want to pack everything on to Monday and say, okay, if I get everything done today, then I can kind of relax tomorrow. But the truth is, is when you see that giant list, you get overwhelmed and immediately your stress levels rise and you just do not get the same level of work done. Your creativity isn't as strong, your focus isn't as strong, and you just kind of want to give up. So spacing all of the tasks out over the week and over the month is going to help you actually complete them. My second tip is to have set working hours. If you have kids, you're probably rolling your eyes at me right now, but just hear me out. If you have a set number of hours every day that you, you plan to work, you don't necessarily have to get them done all at the same time. For me, I have three blocks of working hours. The first one is in the morning before my kids wake up, and the other two are during naps, so these ones are more flexible. In the first block, I work early in the morning before my girls wake up. I work for three hours, and this is when I complete my top priorities for the day. What are those top tasks that I need to do today? This morning block is so important to me because it's uninterrupted time where I get to work. It's where I do my most creative work. I research and script videos, I create content, I have client calls, and I do client work. This is where my most important work gets done, both in my business as well as on my business. In the second block, I finish any of my top priorities from the morning that I haven't yet completed. And then I move on to things like editing videos, engaging in social media, and responding to emails. This is work that's important, but it's not necessarily work that I need my full creative energy to do. In the third block during my girl's second nap, I use this time to purely catch up. I don't start any new tasks. This is purely to catch up on the day. I update my to-do list and then I plan out my day for the next day. I make sure to always plan my next day before I go to bed that night. It just makes sure that I keep on task. And to be honest, when I wake up in the morning, I barely remember the previous day. So I really can't be planning my day in that morning. I need to wake up to a to-do list that is up to date and ready for me to start acting on. 
My next tip is to create systems. So I put my big vision and my big goals into a system called Trello. I like to have it online so that I can see it in front of me and I don't worry about losing a piece of paper that has all of my dreams and goals on. This is a really cool system where you can create boards and you can put cards on the boards and move the cards around and keep track of where you're at in achieving your goals. But once I actually break down those goals into activities, I like to put those activities in a notepad in my phone so that I just have it with me at all times. And then I actually take those activities and those big tasks that I have in my phone and I transfer the tasks to paper. So I actually have a paper day planner that I write Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and underneath I actually write out what are the main tasks that I need to complete today. I find that writing it down with my hand, with pen and paper, really helps me mentally commit to what I have to do every single day. Another system that I create is keeping track of the day-to-day -day stuff of the house. So I create a notebook in my phone for all the things that are really routine, like getting groceries, for example, and I add anything to that list that we run out of during the week. And because I've shared that notebook with my husband, he gets a notification when I've added something and then he can just pick that up on his way home so I don't have to worry about actually telling him about it. He just knows and and he brings it home. The last tip that I have is to ask for help. I know that sometimes it can be hard to ask for help, mostly because we don't even know what we need help with, but the people around you want to support you. They want to be there for you, especially after you have a baby and you want to keep running your business. People want to be there for you. So take some time to sit down and think how they can help you. For me, I really, really value my time in the morning. So if my girls wake up early one morning, my husband goes and gets them up, gets them breakfast, gets all of our breakfast ready, and just does the whole morning routine and lets me finish off what I'm doing. I also have paid help come between four to six hours a week. This makes a huge difference for me. I spend two of those three blocks doing really creative work that requires all of my attention. And I spend the third block doing something for myself or running errands. And the reason I do this is because when the girls are awake and when I'm with them, I just want to be playing with them, eating with them, having fun with them. I don't want to be dragging them around to a bunch of stores to go do errands with me. They're crying. Nobody's happy. It just doesn't make any sense. So if I can have somebody come to not not only help me out to catch up with work, but also so that I can do those really boring errands without my girls. And then when I'm with them, I don't look at my phone. I am not stressed about work. I'm all caught up and I don't have errands to do. So those are my five tips for working from home with a baby or babies in my case. And I would love to know, have you tried any of these? Because I'm always looking for new tips. I always want to learn from others. So if you've tried some of these, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't, let me know which one you might be trying. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll see you all in next week's video.